everybody, and welcome to Food, Friends, Family, hosted by me, Chef Paul. This is a brand new series where I'll be cooking some top-notch, flavorful, and fairly easy dishes and drinks that you can use to entertain your family and friends. Because let's face it, after two years of lockdown, we've forgotten how to cook for more than two people, and we need entertaining more than ever. Okay, before we get started, do a little something for me. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I want to hear from you, so definitely comment below. All right, and now for the first meal of our series. I'm so excited about this one because it's so much fun to eat. I'm gonna do a party-style steam pot with not one, but two dipping butters and a delicious frozen cocktail to pair. Matt, nothing makes me more excited than fresh seafood, a nice variety. I've already prepped and cleaned these. So I have three pounds of cherry stone clams here, which I've given a really good scrubbing with a vegetable brush. And then I just soaked them in some salt water for about two hours, just to get rid of any of that grit from the inside. My mussels, beautiful PEI mussels. I've also soaked them, rinsed them, basically till the water runs clean. You just want nice, clear water, and you want to get rid of any ones that are open, of course, and any ones that are cracked. My lobsters, I've just given a little rinse, and I have these beautiful prawns shell on. That's very important, but they are deveined, so they're ready to go. Instead of doing a seafood boil, we're gonna do a steam pot. This uses a lot less liquid, it's easier to drain, and it helps lock in that flavor that's in those shells. So I'm busting out the biggest pot I have in the house. This is not just good for seafood boils, it's great for things like batch cooking. When I make things like chili, stew, I make two, three times the quantity, great for the freezer, so this is one of my favorite kitchen tools just for that. Into our pot over a high heat, I'm gonna add my liquid. Now you could use beer for this, but I'm gonna use just some sea salted water. This is basically emulating seawater, like we were doing this on the seaside. So four cups or so of lightly seasoned water and some aromatics, just one onion. I'm just gonna knock that in quarters. And one bulb of garlic. I'm gonna knock that right down the center and straight in, just like that. All right, now just bring this up to a rolling boil, cover it, and then it's time to cook. <laughs> okay, so we've got steam. That's exactly what we want. Now, we're gonna put in a bed of baby potatoes. These will lift our seafood out of the water. Careful. Those go in. I'm gonna give the pot a little shake just to make them into one layer. And then I'm gonna give these a little bit of a head start, maybe three, five minutes. Okay, so we've given our potatoes a little head start and now it's time for the lobsters to go in. All right, so we've got great steam action here. You can hear it. And I'm gonna put these in, in as close to a single layer as I can. I tell you, I think the reason why doing lobsters like this makes me feel so good is because when I was a kid, we didn't have any fun, fancy toys at the cottage. My mom would send us down to the river and we would just spray fish. All right, so this is the area we used to come to Cranefish's Kids. It's a little early in the season. It's kind of cold out, but I'm gonna attempt to get in and catch one and show you. No promises, but let's give it a shot. Mind over matter. Oh. oh my god, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh. There we go. Looks pretty small. Like I said, it's early in the season, but yeah, we used to just sit here, pick them out, cook them up. So cool. This seafood boil, this kind of makes me feel like a big kid again. It's so important to me that I actually went down to the river, I got a crayfish, and got it tattooed on my shoulder, and it just sits there, it's like my little buddy, and every time I look over at it, it makes me smile. And so yeah, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling like a big kid, and I can't wait to dump this out. All right, so our cherry stone clams are pretty big today, so I wanna give these a little head start as well. So I'm just gonna lift my lid, we've got good steaming happening, and I'm gonna throw those in, just like that. When buying your seafood, it pays to know the fishmonger. Get in there, talk to them. They'll give you the best stuff, the freshest stuff. If you don't ask, 
you won't know how fresh it is. All right, we're gonna make not one, but two dipping butters for this seafood boil because the flavor's gotta come from somewhere. So we want something that our guests, our family can dunk the seafood into. And it all starts with quite a large quantity of butter. And I'm just gonna melt it in this saucepan. I'm using unsalted butter here, so I'm gonna add a little bit of sea salt. And then as soon as it's melted, we're going to make this into a garlic herb butter, then take half of it and turn that into a Cajun butter. So we have a little bit of variety. Okay, so just that little bit of water you can see is climbing up and our clams are starting to open, just starting to open. So now it's time to add our mussels and our shrimp for that last leg of cooking. All right, right on top, just like that. And you can see, this is why we need a big pot. Okay, and our shrimp, right on top, just like that. And then our fresh corn cobs. I'm just gonna crack these right over top. This is a great way to get out some stress, just like that. Whoop. Six cobs, so everybody gets two halves. And now the lid goes on and we don't take it off until everything is cooked. That shrimp is nice, pink, opaque, and those mussels have opened up. Maybe another five to seven minutes. So our butter is ready, it's melted. I'm gonna turn it right down. We don't want it cooking too much, and what you can do is you can skim off some of these milk solids if you want. My mom would never do that, my grandma would never do that, so I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna get too precious about things, but we are gonna add quite a bit of grated garlic. About five or six cloves, just depending on how strong you like it. And some herbs. I'm gonna add some chopped parsley. and some sliced chives. Remember, you can always add more later, you can't take away. It's really good. Little pinch of salt. Any leftover herbs we have, we can totally use to garnish the finished boil, so nothing's gonna go to waste. Okay, so our garlic herb butter is perfect, it's done, and now we're gonna take half of it and turn it into a Cajun garlic herb butter with just the addition of a few ingredients, two to be exact. So into a smaller saucepan, and now I'm just gonna add some smoked paprika. It's gonna give it a beautiful color, nice smokiness. Stir that in. Immediately the color changes to a deep crimson red and some cayenne pepper sauce. Just your average, the kind that most people keep in their fridge. That'll give it some acidity and a little bit of heat. And that's all you need. Now you have something for the heat seekers, something for the people who just like a traditional garlic butter. And these are gonna be beautiful when we dump out this seafood, which is coming along. Okay, so this is all set, you're ready to go. The corn has deepened in color, the shrimp are cooked through. Now we're just gonna drain this. I'm gonna put a large bowl into the sink to catch that liquid. You can use this for dipping, or you can use it as the base for delicious chowder. So, get some nice rags, get somebody to help you if you need to. This is heavy, safety first. Now, this is ready for the table. Yeah, look at that. It's got all that seafood flavor from the shells, from everything, so don't throw that away. That's good stuff. So this recipe is all about fun and presentation, that exciting moment when it hits the table, so when you're divvying up that garlic and Cajun butter, no one's gonna care what it's served in. Go to the cupboard, pick out ramekins, little bowls, even teacups, have fun with it, make sure there's lots of garlic butter to go around, and place them all around the table so everything's within reach. All right, this is the best part. Should I do it? Should I do it? Ready? Oh, a few lost soldiers, that's fine. Look at that! Oh my God, it's beautiful! All right, look at this. How beautiful is this? Now, just for a few finishing touches, I'm gonna add some lemons. If anybody wants to squeeze that, lemon and seafood, classic combination. It also makes the table look beautiful. Some of those herbs that we have left over, just to make things look extra pretty. Nothing goes to waste. Yeah, just like that. And a little bit of chive right on top. 
And now it's time for the butters. There's no seafood steam pot without the butters. So I'm putting out bowls and I'm gonna divvy that up so everybody can reach it. I got my butters ready. Let's start with our Cajun garlic herb butter. Make sure you get lots of those spices from the bottom. Give it a nice stir. And now our garlic herb butter. Make sure it's all mixed up. Doesn't this look amazing? Now just imagine this on a beautiful tablescape in the backyard. You gotta check out my friend Sarah Gunn. She has created a wonderful tablescape with a seafood feast theme. Click the link on your screen right now to check out her series, Tablescapes. All right, so I'm so ready for the taste test. Uh, one more thing, one more thing. Bowls for shells. Don't leave your guests hanging. Put those everywhere and I'm ready. So I'm gonna try with this big shrimp. Now, by cooking these in the shell, you'll see they have a much, much better flavor. So peel that shell off and I think I'm gonna go for the garlic herb butter. Classic is best. Look how it just gets drenched in that and so good. It reminds me of being a kid. Oh my God, it's so good. You have to try this. Mm. I'm even gonna do the double dip because it's just me here. That's gonna screw up if you guys come eat, sorry. <laughs> so good, so delicious, so comforting. It's like summery, but you don't have to do it in the summer. You could do this any time of year. It's just so festive. And oh, if you wanna look really cool, I'm gonna show you how to crack a lobster and clean it table side. You can just clear a little space for yourself, get yourself a sturdy chef's knife and a kitchen towel to protect your hands. And let's pick out a lobster. I like this one here. So, pull the claws off, just like so. Definitely don't throw the legs out. You can crack those and you can slurp the meat out or you can roll it out. Some of the sweetest meat is in there. But to do the tail, just give that a twist. You can use your towel, the edge of your towel to just clean it off a little bit. Use the towel to protect your hands. Give it a press and then open it like that, and the tail will come right out, just like so. Now, for the claws. You can, of course, use a cracker. If you've got them, get them out. You can crack these open, crack the knuckles open, but if you want to, get a nice claw piece, one that you would see in a lobster cocktail, for example. Take a small part of the claw and just edge it out, and then using this sturdy kitchen knife and Oh, I guess we'll protect our hands as well. Hold it like that and go. Look how beautiful that is. And I think I'm gonna go right in to that garlic herb butter. Oh my God. It's so good, it's so good. This is, gives me life, makes me happy. Mm. And you can do that for everybody. You can teach people how to do it, pass the knife around, take turns. This is supposed to be fun eating. You get in, you get your hands dirty. It doesn't get better than this. All right, because we're doing a seafood feast, a southern cocktail is appropriate. So I'm gonna make my frozen version of a New Orleans hurricane created at Pat O'Brien's. This is a Mardi Gras staple, and it's as simple as combining some ingredients in a blender, adding ice, and whipping it up. So, I'm gonna get going. Into my blender, I'm adding dark and light rum. When this cocktail was created, whiskey was hard to come by, so they just doubled up on the rum. So I'm doing equal parts, dark and light, about an ounce and a half of each. Man, rum smells good <laughs> in an unhealthy way. <laughs> okay, and now some juice. We're using tropical passion fruit juice. If you can't find passion fruit juice, go ahead and use pineapple juice or mango juice or peach juice, just something floral, aromatic like that. And we're doing equal parts of that and orange juice.
and for acidity, some freshly squeezed lime juice. Now, please don't use the bottle stuff. It's just not good. You only need a little bit. Remember, we can always add. We can't take back. So about an ounce of that and some grenadine. So this is pomegranate simple syrup. This is going to add sweetness, tartness, and a nice color. So we're going in with about an ounce and a half of that. And we're going to top it up with ice, about two cups. All right, lid goes on. And we're going to blend it until really smooth. Okay, now, one of my best pieces of advice when making cocktails, because everybody's tastes are different, taste it. Have a taster spoon nearby, because then you can add more sugar. You can add more booze if that's what you want. You can add more juice. You can customize it to your needs, to your company's taste for this. I think it needs a little bit more sweetness, and I'm going to add just a little bit more ice. A little more ice, please. <laughs> like another cup. Oh, sorry, I didn't know it was right there. <laughs> there we go. So you see that color? That was a little bit alarmingly light pink. Darkens down a bit. It's got that nice tropical look. And now into some cocktail glasses. It's so tropical, summery, refreshing. It's going to be a really nice accompaniment to our seafood feast. And now I'm just going to garnish it with a maraschino cherry, a little wedge of orange. And there you go, my frozen hurricane cocktail. Cheers. So good, so good. Tropical, refreshing, rummy. All the things you want on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> all right, and that's all there is to it. We've created a beautiful seafood steam pot feast, two dipping butters, and a frozen southern hurricane cocktail. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. And until next time, cheers. <laughs> Look at the mess we've created. It will be clean. <laughs> Did you like dinner, Dan? Fantastic. Uh, Chef Ball. Chef Ball, everyone. Woo! -hoo!